you know. There are safeguards that we've put in place for our society. I mean, the whole premise of society is what? That we band together and we give up certain of our rights for the benefit of living communally together in a way that is beneficial for all of us, that we reduce the risks associated with having, you know, difference, differences of opinion, differences of ideology, different thoughts and beliefs, and that's the whole premise. That's it, in a nutshell. Otherwise, we're all just individuals living And we'd be constantly at war with each other because somebody would come and steal your stuff and then you'd go and knock them around and then they'd, you'd steal your stuff back or you'd steal your stuff back and some of their stuff. And the next thing you know, you got the Hatfields and McCoys. The problem is We've given up our ability and our right to protect and defend ourselves to a government with the innocent intention and the belief that we were doing the right thing. And to protect ourselves, you know, against the natural instincts of people to be uh, greedy or power crazy or power mad, we've put certain things in place that would enable us to be able to, you know, have some sort of overwatch. Quis custodiet, ipsos custodes. Who will watch the watchers? So we put things like an inspector general, which is a, a kabuki theater. Well, this person will keep an eye on things and make sure that the Department of Homeland Security with 250,000 employees isn't doing anything wrong. Well, how many people did you assign to the Department of Inspector General? One. What? So you've got one person who's supposed to be monitoring 225,000 or 250,000 people with a budget of $60 billion a year? Really? Hello. That's not true. The budget for DHS is only $39 million a year. No, that's the on-books budget. You're not talking about the black budget that was exposed to us only eight months ago. See, we put in place this thing called the Freedom of Information Act. Because in a free society, if you don't have access to information and everything is a secret, then it's pretty easy to lose track of where the corruption and the bribery and the scams and the lies and what have you. And it's too easy for people to be able to avoid exposure. That's why we have a policy that says if you're in government and you send email, it has to be retained so that we can go back later and look at it. Oh, but that doesn't apply to the IRS and the EPA. No, they, they use off-system email that's not accountable. Why would you do that unless you had full intention of doing something that you shouldn't have been doing? The idea of a Freedom of Information Act is so that media organizations and investigative journalists can say, you know, 
or, or industry groups that are concerned about something can get together and say, you know, I don't think we're getting quite the truth here. And we should file a Freedom of Information Act request to find out what was in this email or this policy or this meeting they had and what was discussed and who attended and where did they come from and what are their motivations. And, and so with much fanfare, it was passed to say, we're an open society that believes in freedom of information to our constituents. But in practice, it's a joke. Because when you apply, you get nothing. A recent article out there by Cheryl Atkinson is quite telling. She's talking about how Judicial Watch has been very successful at this. But because Judicial Watch has a bigger hammer than the rest of us, they have, and they are, predominantly a law firm. Now, you know, anybody who's listened to this show long enough knows that I generally don't have a whole lot of respect for lawyers, and I don't have any respect for a lawyer who has assigned himself the title of Esquire, which is a foreign title. But I got to tell you, the people over at Judicial Watch, they're my heroes. Because they're smart enough to use the loopholes left in the law against my enemy and your enemy, and their enemy. They were the ones who broke the story on Benghazi and the emails that are exposing what really happened there. They're the ones who over and over and over again have been able to expose What's going on? How do they do it? Well, they do it through the Freedom of Information Act and other methods, of course, but one of the ways in which they're able to accomplish that is by using the courts to force the government. And, you know, even then, it's rolling the dice because it depends on whether or not you get a, a real judge or you get a shill. Shower writes, Judicial Watch may be the first to know the most about healthcare.gov information that the government has been keeping secret. So they're about to blow the lid off of Obamacare now. Under court order, the Department of Health and Human Services, Kathleen Sebelius's former gang, they have begun giving documents to the conservative watchdog group. Like Judicial Watch, this is from Cheryl Atkinson's article, like Judicial Watch, I filed numerous Freedom of Information requests with HHS last fall when it became clear that government agencies were withholding public information after the website's disastrous October 1st, 2013 launch. While the government has yet to respond properly to any of my FOI requests, Judicial Watch's experienced legal team got busy and filed suit against the government for its lack of response. The minute it was clear there were problems, we started doing FOIs on the, on the website, says Christopher Farrell, Judicial Watch's Director of Investigation and, and Research. We literally have dozens of FOIs pending related to healthcare.gov. They filed their first healthcare.gov on October 7th, six days after the opening of Obamacare's healthcare.gov website. There was no denial appeal. HHS just never responded beyond acknowledging the request. And they waited until October 30th to do that. The lack of response is typical of the way the government has increasingly mishandled freedom of information requests in recent years, and it mirrors the experience reported by many journalists. Judicial Watch filed its initial lawsuit against the HHS on November 25, 2013, and on April 29, 2014, the court ordered HHS to produce certain documents. 
Judicial Watch sued the State Department over withheld public documents regarding the Benghazi terrorist attacks on September 11. On April 29th, Judicial Watch released 41 new documents the court ordered the State Department to produce. The State Department documents included materials that contradicts Obama administration accounts and revealed significant White House involvement in directing the so-called talking points toward the mistaken narrative of spontaneous protesters rather than pre-planned terrorism. Shortly after the revelations, the House of Representatives voted to convene a special select committee to investigate Benghazi issues. Federal agencies such as HHS and the State Department spend your tax dollars in their efforts to withhold public information that's requested under Freedom of Information Act law. And when the agencies lose their cases in court, they may even be ordered to reimburse groups like Judicial Watch for the legal fees. The federal agencies use your tax dollars for that, too. In other words, for the government, there's no downside to flouting the Freedom of Information Act law. At the very least, the feds managed to delay the release of potentially damaging information. At best, they may have to eventually produce a withheld material and pay legal fees. But they pay with your tax dollars. Farrell says his group is reviewing the new healthcare.gov documents. Among them, he says, is an October 2013 email that celebrates the fact of two enrollments. Since the disastrous launch of healthcare.gov, the Obama administration has claimed many success stories and achievements, including exceeding its enrollment goal of 7.1 million people by April 1st and 8 million by April 17th. However, the government continues to withhold information that would allow independent analysts to check the numbers. Critics have questioned the government's claims of success, noting that not all of the enrollees are actually enrolled in a plan because some haven't paid, and not all of the enrollees were previously uninsured, since an estimated 5 million people were forced out of their plans by Obamacare in the first place. You see... When you've got something like Obamacare that is treated as a matter of national security and the idea of Freedom of Information Act and the idea of open government, transparent government, is barred while lip service is paid to it, you can draw no other conclusion than that something is going on that there is scandal to be found, that there is dirt to be seen. I mean, look at it this way. Let's just take an analogy and follow it through. You go home, and lately your husband or your wife has been doing an awful lot of texting. And it's kind of unusual because they never did before. And you say, I'd like to see that phone. And suddenly, they get very defensive. Suddenly they say, absolutely not, this is my private communication. Well, I get that, but I'm your husband. I mean, I'm, or I'm your wife. I I didn't think we had secrets. I mean, aren't we in this together? What could be in there that you didn't want me to see. Nothing. There's nothing in there that you shouldn't see. Comes the frantic and frenetic reply. But you can't see it. Well, can you tell me why? No. I don't have to. Hmm. What would you be left to conclude? Perhaps there is something to be seen if the protest is so loud, so boisterous, so effusive, and so out of character. 
Do you not think the secret society that we live in is completely out of character for a nation which, for all intents and purposes, prides itself on being a model of transparency and open government, a government of republic, by, for, and of the people, consent of? But everything's a secret. Everything that matters. Everything except Kim Kardashian's butt. That's not a secret. Everybody's seen that. Even those who didn't want to. (laughs) You see, you know something's wrong. And you don't have to be, you know, trained in some clinical observation uh, methodology. You don't have to be a psychologist or a psychiatrist. You don't even have to be trained in reading body language to know when your husband or your wife and your relationship have changed. When suddenly your husband starts caring much more about his personal physical appearance. Or your wife starts caring much more about hers than she has for the past X number of years. When she's determined to lose weight and appears to be putting on makeup to go to the grocery store, which she hasn't done in, hmm. Or your husband starts staying after work unaccountably and inexplicably three or four nights a week. Is this any different? Well, the subject matter is different, but the principles and the evidence and the knowledge are all the same. And only banana republics operate in a state of secrecy. Only places like Saddam Hussein's Iraq. Only places like Mr. Putin's Russia. Only countries like China are willing to shut down free speech and demand that you not question their actions. But our nation is not any of those. Our nation was designed with the phrase consent of the governed as its slogan. Well, how can we consent if we don't know what's happening? Now, is everything open to, you know, I mean, should we know about everything that government is doing? There are some limits. I'm the first to admit that. But I got to tell you, those limits are, you know, if you think of a fence that goes around the entire county and then a fence that goes around the town inside the county, I believe that the the town should be off limits. But the county, come on. I think you've just taken it a little too far. The truth is that until we have people in place that we can trust, we are really never going to, and and we're never going to be able to, one, feel confident that what they're doing is not steeped in corruption and their own personal benefit, because we know that to be the truth. We've got empirical evidence, mountains of it,
the whole point of openness of our society was to eliminate that. So when the sunshine is blocked and people want to keep things in the dark, there is only one reason why they would. You can't tell me that healthcare.gov is a matter of national security. How many people signed up and paid? How is that a matter of national security? You can't tell me that Fast and Furious and the documents associated with that was a matter of national security. I mean, this isn't something that was done to us by a foreign nation. This is something we did to a foreign nation. Hello? You can't tell me that whether or not individuals within the IRS who are utilizing persecution as a tool to meet government political agendas and ideology is a matter of national security. You can't tell me that emails being sent back and forth on outside accounts, which are used specifically to thwart the whole premise behind the idea that accounts have to be recorded so that they can later be reviewed for appropriateness. You can't tell me that that's a matter of national security. It's not. The rules, the carbon rules that the EPA puts in place, the rules about seizing private property on the whim and the agenda of some individual who runs some remote little outpost in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, that's not a matter of national security. That's why I've called for a national ombudsman, but not paid for by government, not an inspector general who answers to Congress and has to review their reports with the self-same group that they're supposed to be uh, commencing oversight of. How is it that the Department of, of, of uh, Homeland Security's IG was so corrupted, he was pulled from the job? That's not an open society. How many people willingly laid down their good, hard-earned money to buy the Obamacare program they were lied about or lied to about in the first place is not a matter of national security. Believe me, there's nothing that Russia and China and Iran can glean from how many Americans paid their insurance premium. It's not a secret how many people are on food stamps. It's not a secret how many of those people shouldn't be. It's not a secret how many people Department of Homeland Security and ICE released into the, into the uh, community out of 100,000 people. It's not a secret how many people the government has actually cast, cast back over the border. Why do we have to demand these documents from the Freedom of Information Act, which is then thwarted and fought back against until they're forced to do so at the point of a judge's gun. Ladies and gentlemen, that should be all the proof that you need that something is inherently, desperately, criminally wrong in your nation. And the time has come for you to say, I've had enough. I'm going to stand up and I'm going on strike. I'm going on strike as an American. I'm not going to go to my job. I'm not going to pay my car payment. I'm not going to pay my mortgage. I'm going to tell the credit card companies to go jump in the lake. I'm not showing up for work. I'm going to go back out and I'm going to till some land in my backyard and I'm going to garden. And if I live in a city, 
me and a group of people in my building, we're going to find an empty lot a quarter of a block away, and we're going to do it there. And when someone comes to try to take them away, we're going to defend it. And we're going to do this, and we're going to starve the beast to death until the beast capitulates to us. And if it comes to a violent confrontation where we need to defend ourselves from that beast, we have the means and the method and the motivation to do that. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.